Hi there, this is Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. I'm here every Monday at 4.30pm to talk about the boxing action of the weekend just gone. But with no boxing action taking place in the UK for the month of January, we are switching our attention to other subjects. And this week I thought I would talk a little bit about Anthony Joshua and his search, whether that's come to an end or not, we're not sure at the moment, for a new trainer. Um, it seems to be pretty much common knowledge now that AJ will move on from longtime trainer and GB performance director Robert McCracken. A um, number of reports have suggested so, promoter Eddie Hearn has hinted at it. And in an interview, I think last week, even McCracken's brother, fellow trainer Max McCracken, uh, suggested they have now uh, parted ways. Uh, this isn't a decision AJ would have taken lightly. Uh, he's known to be an intensely loyal character. Most of the people involved in his 258 management company are people that he's known for many, many years, worked with for a long time. Um, and there's even suggestions that one of the assistant trainers that he brought into camp for the Andy Ruiz rematch, uh, Angel Fernandez, will be part of any new setup likely to be out in the US. We saw, obviously, uh, in the autumn of last year, Joshua touring some of the major US gyms, including those of Ronnie Shields and Robert Garcia, um, looking for tips, inspiration, or perhaps a whole new training team. It was never really confirmed and still hasn't been, but from putting all the pieces together, reading between the lines, it does seem like Joshua is looking to expand his horizons and train for the Alexander Usyk rematch out in the US. Um, Ronnie Shields said something like, uh, Joshua told me he's got to be a dog in this fight, the rematch with Usyk, um, and I need you to make me the best dog you can make me, basically. Um, I've probably butchered Joshua's words there, although they are secondhand anyway. Um, but you get the point. Um, he needs to impose himself more, he needs to attack more, he needs to be more aggressive with Usyk second time around, certainly in his view. Um, but one of the interesting things Shields reportedly said was that uh, Angel Fernandez was going to be part of any team that Joshua had insisted he bring him into the camp as well. Um, so that suggests it won't all be kind of gung-ho uh, attacking boxing because Fernandez is known more for um, increasing a fighter's agility and rhythm and using um, intelligent footwork. So there will be you know, nuances, if you like, to AJ's performance. And, and they'd be there anyway with a coach such as Shields, who incredibly experienced, trained a number of world champions, of course, um, including the Charlos and, and many others in previous years as well, if, if indeed that's who Joshua decides to employ. Um, as for McCracken, you can understand why Joshua wants to freshen things up a bit. This is the most important fight of his career. Um, if he loses the rematch to Usyk, He's still a viable um, and very marketable opponent for Tyson Fury, uh, Deontay Wilder, two fights that we've yet to see. But the value of those fights will be tarnished a little bit if Joshua loses a second time to Usyk. And he will probably never be thought of again, should he um, suffer defeat in the rematch, probably never be thought of again as the number one heavyweight in the world, which some people have seen him as. Um, over the last few years, especially before Tyson Fury's rematch victory over Deontay Wilder. So for someone like AJ, Olympic gold medalist, fought so hard, started boxing late, fought so hard to get where he is, hugely ambitious, um, it would be a, a hard cross for him to bear. I don't suppose there's many easy crosses to bear, um, faulty analogy, but you get the point. He'd find it quite difficult for, to, to deal with that his newfound status as the number two, three, four, whatever heavyweight in the world. He wants to be the main man and to continue to do that, or at least to have a chance of doing so, and to get an undisputed fight in the future with Tyson Fury, um, rather than just be uh, a challenger uh, for Fury's title. He needs to be Usyk in the rematch. Now, Rob McCracken may feel a little hard done by, not just because they've been together for as long as they have, but because his own record in rematches is none too shabby. Um, with Cole Froch, obviously, he took him to rematch victory over Mikhail Kessler and George Groves. And they won the first Groves fight, but it was very controversial. There was not much controversial about the return uh, when Froch wiped Groves out, obviously. 
um, and yeah, and the Kessler fight. A lot of people would contend perhaps that had more to do with Froch's innate, you know, chin, uh, guts, aggression, punch power than it did with any tactical or technical improvements or adjustments made by McCracken, although I would contend some of those were apparent. Um, but also McCracken with AJ was uh, the main man in the corner when he cruised to victory in the return with Andy Ruiz. Now, obviously, other people were brought into camp, and I'm sure they had an impact too. But McCracken was still there when AJ was kind of down on his luck, needed some fresh inspiration, changed the tactics, changed the, the game plan for the rematch, and, and won easily, albeit over a, a Ruiz who lacked the same motivation as he had for that big upset in New York. Um, so McCracken might feel... You know, a little unfairly treated to feel that he could um, implement the necessary adjustments for AJ to, to beat Usyk in the rematch. However, um, a lot of people have said recently that there are now too many people in AJ's corner, too many uh, assistants, if you like, have been brought in, and maybe McCracken doesn't have quite the same uh, power in the team as he once did. And not only that, perhaps a lot of this is that AJ just wants a fresh environment you know, to spar new fighters, to train alongside new fighters, as well as a new coach or coaches to listen to. It might not just be about McCracken or what he's done wrong. You know, like any relationship, whether personal or professional, there will come a time where that will be strained and where there will be, you know, a desire for, for something new, something different. Um, and perhaps in this case, you know, it's understandable. And I think... He will not, as I said this earlier, AJ wouldn't have taken this decision lightly. McCracken's a lot more than just a trainer to him. He, he's a mentor, he's a friend. Um, so it wouldn't have been easy to, to decide if he has indeed decided to sever tyres. Um, but this is make or break for him to some extent. You know, He won't have to retire if he loses, as I said, but it will diminish his status markedly. And I think this is where he needs to make big changes. He won't feel that staying with the same team but, but making a few adjustments around the margins will be enough. You know, uh, Joshua will want to, to make wholesale, wholesale, not wholesale, wholesale changes. And that will involve uh, going to a new country to train, it seems. Um, we're not sure which trainer he'll go with yet. Um, but pretty much everyone he's visited tends to be uh, the more... Uh, on the, train more aggressive fighters or train an aggressive style um, certainly Ronnie Shields and Robert Garcia would subscribe to that method um, and it also remains to be seen how this will affect Angel Fernandez's other fighters uh, he's just started training Fraser Clark one of AJ's successors as GB amateur super heavyweight rep uh, Olympic bronze medalist of course um, in the most recent games but he's signed to AJ's 258 management company so the chances are He'll relish going out to work with AJ and Fernandez in another country. I don't think he'll have any issue with that at the start of his career. Um, but then you've got Richard Riakpour, cruiserweight unbeaten, knocking on the door of a world title shot. Will he want to uproot and go out to the US? He loves the facilities that he enjoys with Fernandez in Loughborough University at the moment. But it's an opportunity to get ideas from other coaches, to work in you know, a different environment in the US, which great sparring, I would imagine, over there as well. So it doesn't seem like it would be a particularly hard sell um, for Fernandez's other fighters. Now, as I've said, we still wait for official confirmation from Joshua's team or from McCracken or both. Um, but it does seem very likely Joshua's moving on in search of fresh impetus. Um, I find it very hard, having watched the first fight, to see how he can adjust enough sufficiently to, to beat Usyk and to turn the tables. I don't see Usyk falling off the rails in the same way Andy Ruiz did, um, for example. If anything, he'll be even better with another fight at heavyweight in the bank. His confidence would have improved from beating Joshua as well. I think he'll be an even tougher opponent to beat in the, in the second fight than he was in the first. Um, and then whoever the new trainer is, it's a lot to ask of them to turn the tables to such an extent so soon into their relationship with Joshua. You look at fighters late in their career who changed trainers um, and then had success. So like Andy Lee with Adam Booth, George Groves with Shane McGuigan, both finally got to that world title, that elusive world title under their, late, like their last coach of their careers. But both of them had three or four fights with the new guy before embarking on that world title shot. AJ's and this new coach's relationships really got to hit the ground running. There's no time to bet in. Um, 
a more recent example would be Tyson Fury with Sugar Hill Stewart um, going into that rematch with Deontay Wilder um, and smashing him to bits with, with new tactics. Now, that kind of offers a glimmer of hope to AJ, but there's a couple of differences. One is that um, Fury already had a long-standing relationship with Stewart. He might not have trained him as the head coach before, but they knew each other for a long time when Stewart... Uh, sorry, when Fury was spending time with uh, Sugar Hill's uncle, Emmanuel Stewart. So there was already a close friendship there. They'd done some work in the gym together. Not only that, but Fury hadn't lost the Wilder fight. It was officially a draw. Most people thought he'd done enough to win. And there was plenty of um, kind of bits to cling on to there that he'd taken Wilder's best shots and got up, that he'd outboxed him for the majority of the fight. So there was plenty for Sugar Hill to come in and say, do you know what, we've just got to make a few tweaks and you'll win this easy. AJ was comprehensively defeated by Usyk, so whoever comes in has got to A, rebuild his confidence, B, get him to buy into the game plan that they think is going to change things in the rematch, and C, just completely deliver a new performance that's so distinct from the first one, it's not just enough to make AJ's uh, performance improve, but it's enough to defeat Usyk, who you know, is incredibly adaptable. He's a, he's, you know, a very versatile, adaptable fighter. So whatever AJ comes with, he'll be ready to kind of adjust his own approach to, to counter. But I suppose in AJ's case, he probably feels it's better to make some change than no change at this stage. And good luck to him because, you know, we all, I don't know we all, but I certainly want to see the, an all British heavyweight super fight between a, a rejuvenated, uh, redempt, redemptive AJ and Tyson Fury, who would hopefully still be unbeaten. Remains to be seen. Um, but yeah, I've said enough. I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comments. What do you make of AJ very likely now changing trainer, moving on from McCracken? Is it the right decision? And perhaps more importantly, if he is moving on from McCracken, who should he go with? It's going to be someone in America. Um, I know from speaking to a lot of UK trainers who he's reached out to, who he hasn't, but it does seem very likely it won't be in this country. Who should he go with out of the, the US trainers that you've seen rumoured alongside him or whose gyms he's visited? Who do you think is the best fit for AJ? Or maybe more importantly, who's the best fit to defeat Usyk in the rematch? Because this could be a relationship that only lasts one fight. Let's wait and see. Let me know what you think and I'll respond to some of the comments. I'll be back on Thursday for Flexpectations, uh, looking ahead to something. I don't know what yet. It won't be the weekend's action because there isn't any, but I'm sure I'll come up with something by then. Uh, and then next Monday, the next reflections at the same time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all soon.